Hi, Dr. Nagy from the Nagy Orthodontic Academy. So today we are going to talk about open bites. Um, I realize it's a large subject, uh, subject so we're going to uh, kind of hit some of the highlights. Um, I got a lot of questions for both patients and doctors how to uh, treat as well as prevent open bites. Um, so um, it would be good to talk about some of the causes and different treatment options in both uh, children and adults. So when you, uh, when you want to understand open bites, you want to talk about or first look at what happens in kids. So um, for example, sometimes children will de develop a habit, for example, thumb sucking. Um, <clears throat> you know, they put their thumb between their teeth and that continuous force can simply force the teeth apart. So now they can have an open bite in the front between the front teeth. Um, as well as when they have their fingers between the teeth all the time, the teeth just simply cannot erupt together. Now this creates a problem because normally when you eat, your teeth and your lips uh, create a seal so when you're chewing and you're swallowing, food doesn't spill out of your mouth. But now, you, you know, um, now for example this child with a thumb sucking ha habit created a situation where the teeth just do not come together and then they have an opening <clears throat> and if they just try to swallow like that, food will simply spill out of, the, you know, out of their mouth or you know, they wouldn't be able to eat very well. So what they do is they, do, uh, they adapt this um, habit where they put their tongue between their teeth to create a seal. So in a way, <clears throat> um, the tongue habit between the teeth is more of a result of the open bite, um, not so much the start cause of it in a lot of times. For example, in this, in, for example, in this thumb sucking example. So, um, you know, the child starts sucking, the, uh, sucking their thumb, they create this open bite, and now they have this, this tongue seal to seal the gap so they can eat and, and drink without spilling food out, out of their mouth. So that's one of the reasons of an open bite, for example, in kids. Uh, the other reason can be uh, they can have an incorrect swallowing pattern. So, for example, um, if they push their tongue on one side of the arch, uh, um, maybe they lost the tooth there early because of cavity or whatever reason. And then they, now they have a gap there and now they put their tongue on that side to create a seal as well. And the tongue habit forces the bite open again on that side. So they can have an open bite on the side as well, on both sides or just one side. Um, <clears throat> so now, um, so now they have this, uh, uh, incorrect pattern where they're swallowing with the tongue between the teeth and that's not how you're supposed to swallow that's not a normal swallowing pattern so let's talk about what's a normal swallowing pattern so when you um, <clears throat> when you swallow uh, usually your tongue is behind your upper front teeth so your tongue wants to you know needs to be here be behind these teeth which is the incisive papilla right here and and a tongue rests flat on the roof of your mouth and when you swallow your your tongue is against the roof of your mouth and it pushes the food back and down and that's how you swallow so now when you have a patient who's um, you know they have their tongue between their teeth uh, and they create this open bite and now they have this uh, tongue posture where the tongue is always between the teeth. They also have a low and forward um, you know, uh, tongue swallow. So for example, um, they swallow in a way that their, their tongue is between the teeth. So you can see this in a lot of patients and actually there's a lot of research showing it too. I put it in the comment section so you can see some of the research with regarding to this as well. But patients will get this, this swallowing pattern where they actually, the tongue is between the teeth and and that's how they swallow. So basically they have this low and forward tongue posture when they swallow. So instead of having their, their tongue against the roof of the mouth, which should be resting behind the front teeth and flat against the roof of the palate, they have this tongue posture where their tongue is just simply forward all the time between the teeth because of the open bite. So now they have uh, you know, a different and an altered swallowing pattern as well. Now the other thing that they have is usually um, uh, an altered resting tongue posture. So when you look at, patient, uh, when you look at people with a normal resting tongue, uh, like we talked about, their tongue would be against the roof of the mouth, behind these front teeth, flat against the palate and that's how they usually they rest as well and when they swallow they tongue push against the roof of the palate as well so that's a normal resting tongue posture so these patients a lot of times these patients with an open bite they have a low and forward so the tongue is just between the teeth and it's pushing against the lower teeth or there is just simply on top of the lower teeth and that's how they're resting 
So they just always, the tongue is always between the teeth. Now, and here is another big reason why uh, children will have these open bites as well as low and forward resting tongue postures, um, as well as incorrect swelling pattern because of airway problems. That's that's a really large cause of this, uh, <clears throat> especially in large tonsils and uh, sometimes large adenoids. Large tonsils is one of the big causes of, of uh, uh, developing this low and forward tongue posture. So what happens um, because of allergies or just simply in large tonsils, uh, the patient can't breathe through their nose, which you know you should be breathing through your nose, breathing through your nose with your lips sealed. But because they can't, because of they have these enlarged tonsils and uh, uh, inflammations in their nose, or for, for example, they could have even deviated septum, uh, they cannot breathe through their nose. So what happens? They become mouth breathers. So now they they always breathe through their mouth. So when you open your mouth, your masseter muscles also push against your teeth so now they're getting these narrower arches because the masseter muscles are pushing against the teeth and the tongue is not there to push against it back to keep an equilibrium so now they, you're getting these smaller 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 arches and because the tongue is low and forward you get more and more of the lengthening of the face and they're getting more and more of this open bite so they start you know they start developing uh, um, an arch that's more narrow open in the front Maybe the posterior, the back teeth are touching, but um, uh, and the the angle of the jaw angle starts increasing, so they get more of a lengthening of the face. The other thing that starts happening to these patients too, because they can't breathe through their nose, they they breathing through their mouth, they tip their head up a little bit because especially if they have large tonsils, the when you tip your head up, you can breathe a little bit better. So now they get this this head forward and looking up this forward head posture so there's a lot of implications of the these open bites that's just not as simple as just having the the teeth not come together so now they're getting this low and forward tongue postures they're getting this uh, incorrect swallowing pattern and also the other thing that they're getting is they're getting this you know looking up and forward this this uh, low and forward uh, head posture and because this is a really straining way of of um, <clears throat> uh, you know just living what happens is it puts a lot of strains on your shoulders and your shoulders starts getting kind of rounded and you start getting more of this this poor posture so a lot of times you see these kids just with these longer faces they look very tired because they can't sleep and then they're getting these postural problems too and uh, if you look at the kids you can actually see this what happens is uh, uh, you know they have this uh, uh, posture where they're looking up and the shoulders forward and a lot of times they get this anterior pelvic tilt too and where the stomach looks extended because the, the hip is uh, rotated forward and they're looking up and they get this rounded shoulder so they start getting this this kind of posture which is really not uh, not very uh, <clears throat> desirable and it creates a lot of tensions in your shoulders and your neck and oftentimes your back because your shoulders are always forward so now you see it creates these open bite uh, problems creates all these other problems as well so now you got posture problems you got muscle problems you get the shoulders kind of coming forward you get the uh, you know the, the um, forward head posture that a lot of times it's looking up a little bit so um, there's a big um, airway component to uh, to uh, open bites. So <clears throat> that's predominantly what happens in majority of the cases with open bites. And there's also um, a little bit of a genetic factor. For example, some patients have a genetic predisposition to open bites, skeletal open bites, when they just have this really large vertical growth. So that's another another issue. But majority of the cases have an airway component. They have the thumb sucking problems, and they develop these tongue, these uh, swallowing patterns, and and um, as well as resting tongue issues. So again, you want to make sure. Uh, that you realize that the normal resting tongue posture, as you can kind of read about it, it should be against the front teeth. Your tongue should be against the front teeth, flat against the roof of the mouth. And when you swallow, you should swallow with the tongue against the roof of the mouth, roof, roof of the mouth as well. Now here comes the problem. You can't just tell people to put your tongue against the roof of your mouth and swallow that way. That's not how it works. If they have an open bite, they're not just going to magically able to do that just because you tell them. So um, you have to do some exercises, but you also have to, um, you know, correct the problem before you can really, 
establish these new habits because what happens is um, because the arches are more narrow now because of the open bite um, patients don't even have room for the tongue to put the tongue in the right position so a lot of times you have to do like palatal expansions if it's appropriate you know if the arch is really narrow compared to the lower arch then you know you do you do an expander uh, so now they have better room for the tongue so you have to start therapy f you know before you start orthodontic treatment but you have to do the therapy the you know the the speech therapy as well as uh, you know uh, functional uh, therapy for the tongue and the lips um, <clears throat> while you're doing your orthodontic treatment as well and then you have to do therapy a lot of times afterwards too and sometimes you have to work with like a speech therapist as well um, <clears throat> so um, but it's important to kind of start your therapy before you start treatment and during treatment and if they still have this perifunctional swallowing as well as resting tongue posture uh, don't forget once you take your braces off if the tongue postures and the tongue habits are not corrected that's just going to open up your bite and you're going to have a relapse even if it's a surgical case um, and uh, so uh, it's very important to deal with these issues um, uh, during and after treatment and before a little bit too but it's important that you can you can tell the patients to swallow with the tongue against the roof of their mouth if they have an open bite because food will just be lots you, you have to close the bite while patients are practicing that new uh, correct uh, swallowing um, as well as resting tongue posture so um, now the other thing that happens with uh, open bite cases patients upper lip become very un untrained because it's it's not used because um, when they have this open bite their upper lip just kind of hangs there they have what's called incompetent lips and you can see this on patients where they you know they their mouth is always open and their lips are always apart a lot of times they have inflamed gingiva so the gums are really kind of puffy um, <clears throat> because their mouth is always open so they have what's called an incompetent lips that just means their lips do not come together so um, <clears throat> the problem becomes with the with the with the incompetent lips when your lips don't come together your upper lips become very untrained and weak and short so what happens they get a short upper lip as well and because the lip is a round muscle a orbiculus oris muscle because if you don't use a muscle it's not it's gonna atrophy so if you have if you never use your biceps or you never do exercises your muscle is going to be really weak and same thing happens if you don't use your your lip muscles they're just going to stay short and they just get shorter and they're just going to be uh, just kind of hang there on the top on your top of your lips so just because you close the open bite with your treatment uh, doesn't mean that the patients will have a competent lip that comes together at rest and that's the number one complaint I see all the time uh, even patients who had surgery they think after surgery their lips will come together sometimes it does and many times it doesn't because the upper lip might be still short now here comes a, a really cool thing you can actually make your upper lip longer and um, there's research for this and I can cite the research but I don't want to spend like a ton of time with this but just uh, just please know that if you do exercises because your lip muscle it's a round muscle uh, so if you exercise it it's going to get stronger and it will hypertrophy hypertrophy it will it will actually grow so um, it will your lips will actually get longer matter of fact in one of the research where they uh, had patients do lip exercises um, their lips length increased anywhere between two to three millimeters the largest increase was I think four, four to five millimeters so you can actually really make your upper lips longer which will create a better lip seal so if you have incompetent lips that do not come together if you do some exercises uh, to make the, your lip muscle stronger they will actually get longer as well as you can do some stretches so here comes the key if you um, uh, you know if you have incompetent lips and maybe your open bite is already closed you're gonna have to do some exercises so I'll show you a couple examples and uh, uh, <clears throat> a couple of things that you can do based on research of, of you know when they looked at these cases and tried to help patients to uh, you know close their lips when they rest so when you uh, the way to test if you have competent lips or not you can um, you can simply lick your lips and swallow and say the letter M M and just kind of relax there when you say the letter M and don't force your lips together that will be your kind of uh, uh, an idea it, you know where your lips rest uh, when you just kind of relaxed if when you say the letter M 
and your lips are apart, that's really an incompetent lip where your lips just do not come together. So <clears throat> there's a couple of things you can do to, uh, uh, to make your lips come together better. The best exercise is, um, and just going back, one of the most important things is before you do all this, you have to make sure you have a good airway. So we talked about it, some of the causes of open bite is airway issues, large tonsils. You got to make sure that you can breathe through your nose. So that's step number one. You have to be able to breathe through your nose. If you have deviated septum, if you have allergies, tonsils, whatever, you got to be able to breathe through your nose. Uh, if you're going to deal with your open bite successfully. So you got to go see an ENT, an allergist, or whoever you have to see, but you have to be able to close your lips and keep your lips closed and breathe through your nose, or otherwise you will not be able to deal with your open bite very effectively. So that's step number one. Step number two will be to exercise your lips. So you have this, if you have these incompetent lips and you can't bring your lips together, you can do lip exercises. And one of the old and true and tested method is uh, what's called a battle button. You can kind of read about it on the internet. It's been around since, I don't know, 50s. I'm not even sure who invented it, but you can just simply take a button <clears throat> and you can <clears throat> strengthen your lips. And what you're going to do is you put, your, put these buttons <clears throat> in front of your teeth and behind your lips, okay? So when you put, put this button behind your lips, you will hold these, you will hold this button on a string and uh, um, you will pull against it and just hold the button with your lips and that will strengthen your lips and you can simply pull forward with the button with the string you can pull up and you can pull down a little bit to the side so this will strengthen strengthen your your lips and the way you do that is you just put the button behind in front of the teeth you hold it with your lips and then you're gonna pull against it with an increasing force for 20 seconds. Okay, so you're just gonna count to 20 and you pull, 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 a little bit harder, harder, harder until you can't hold it anymore. And you're gonna repeat that about 20 times. So 20 seconds, 20 times, and you do it as many times as you can a day. I would do it probably 10 to 20 times a day. So I would do like a 20, 20, 20. You hold it for 20 seconds, pull, pull, pull. You do this 20 times, okay? And you repeat this 20 times a day and you can pull for different directions. So you can pull up, down, and sides, and this will really increase the strength of your lips. And if you look at some of the open bite patients, how hard time they have. So for example, for the first time they do it, oftentimes it just, the button just falls out of their mouth really easily. So you have to really hold on to that, to that button and, and in, with the increasing force, you just pull against it until you can't hold it anymore. The other thing you can do, you can tie the other end of the string um, on an empty uh, plastic uh, meal carton and put a little water in it and lift it up from the ground and see how, how much strength your lips have to lift, uh, how much weight can you lift with it and you keep adding water to the jug and keep lifting it. So you do the pulling exercises, you do the lifting exercises, okay? So I'll show you how you do this. You can kind of Google this from the internet too, but you simply put it behind your, <clears throat> your lips, your hold. And you pull um, against the force of your lips and you hold it for 20 seconds okay so and you can pull up you can pull forward and you can pull down as well as the sides and don't underestimate this this will really help you strengthen your lips and make your upper lips longer there's a research that I told you where they actually measured patients upper lip just by doing a simple exercise <clears throat> and some stretches they were able to make the patient's upper lip uh, increase okay so this is your battle button um, you can take any button and the size of this button well, I don't know, compared to like my watch, uh, this is just a normal button. This is, a company makes this, it's a little bit more rounded in the front and flat in the back, but you can take any button, just go to the store and, you know, buy, uh, buy these buttons. Uh, I don't know, I don't have it measured how big they are, but uh, I don't have really a ruler here. Uh, maybe I can, yeah, I don't have a ruler. I don't have a ruler to measure it, but it's just, um, you can kind of compare it to my watch. It's, uh, it's just a uh, normal size, almost like a code button. So <clears throat> practice that. This is really important. The other thing you can do is do simple stretching exercises. Okay. So one thing in that research that I told you about where they help patients increase their lips, they used uh, thumb stretches. So you put your thumb behind your lips and you simply pull down on your upper lips. Okay. <clears throat> so you do. Kind of stretch your lips 
so by stretching your upper lips you know it will the the muscles will will stretch as well as your lips will get um you know longer so now you're doing your your battle buttons you do your stretches and you just simply put your thumb behind your lips and just stretch 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 the other thing you can do you can do the you know the monkey fizz where you pull and then you push the air behind your lips and you hold it so you do that, okay? So if you just do those three exercises, um, <clears throat> you can really get good results with getting more confident lips as long as you can breathe through your nose. So don't forget, make sure you can breathe through your nose. So you do your battle button, you do your stretches with your thumb, you simply stretch, stretch, and you do 20, 20, 20. You do 20 seconds, 20 sets, and you do it 20 times a day. You do it all together with the battle button, okay? And this will help you get more competent lifts, okay? So what are the things that you can do for uh, once you have a normal uh, palate and you're trying to p practice your your um, your resting tongue posture? One thing you can do, you can get like a sugar-free lifesaver. You can put it on your tongue and you can hold it against the roof of your mouth and swallow with that with holding that lifesaver so that will that will help you establish two things one is <clears throat> a high and normal resting tongue posture as well as a, a high and normal uh, swallowing pattern so if you just get a tic tac or a sugar-free lifesaver you just put it against your tongue and you hold that lifesaver right here and you let it kind of melt and you keep holding that lifesaver there and you keep swallowing and holding that candy there uh, <clears throat> until it melts so you can develop better swallowing patterns but again your your a lot of times your arch has to be a normal size because if your arches are so narrow that you can't even fit your tongue there um, that uh, <clears throat> it's not going to work so you need both the therapy and you need the exercises at the same time uh, so just uh, make sure keep those in mind okay so again review use your battle button put it behind your lip pull you do that about for 20 seconds 20 times and you do it 20 times a day okay and then you're going to do your uh, <clears throat> your stretches you know you stretch with your thumb you do the monkey face where you push air behind your lips and then you are going to do the candy the sugar-free make sure you get a sugar-free candy so you don't get a bunch of cavities so you got a tic tac or a lifesaver put it against the roof of your mouth hold it right here <clears throat> and then you're gonna swallow until that candy melts, okay? So those are some of the things that you can do. Now, there's other things you can do too, working on your posture, but that's another video, because like I said, you, a lot of these patients have this uh, forward head posture where they're looking up, you got these rounded shoulders, forward rotated hips, so you gotta work on that too, because you can see it on kids too, it's a very unhealthy posture, but we'll address that in another video. So hopefully this helps, and if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, um, <clears throat> don't under, underestimate these exercises. These exercises will really help to get you get better lip seals and uh, a good, uh, you know, confident lips. And one thing to keep in mind, again, make sure you, you can breathe through your nose. And when, when you're at rest, your lips should be together, your teeth should be together, and your tongue should be against the roof of your mouth when you swallow and when you rest. <clears throat> and that is what's, uh, what we consider more of a normal um, tongue and uh, uh, lip posture. So good, hopefully um, you enjoyed this and uh, any questions, just shoot me an email. Have a good rest of the day, bye.